Productions. What's going on, folks? This is Alec from The Final Drive. Make sure you like and subscribe right up here. Enjoy the show. What is going on, everybody? Welcome into another episode of the Final Drive Podcast here at Sour Kids Production Studios. It is Alec. Obviously, DeAndre is on Skype, as you can see. And Nicholas, we brought Nick back for another episode. Mm, yes, sir. <laughs> so, uh, we have Cam back there eating some leftover pizza He's off been camera. that slice for like an hour. They eating good. Mm. Yeah, he eating good over here. Sour kids, Sour kids eating good today, aren't they, Ken? Sour kids stays eating. <laughs> but, uh... Before we get into the the news we have, gentlemen, uh, just real quick, how we doing? How we doing today, guys? Well, uh, I had a basketball game last night. Uh, we lost. Did you but, talk? Did you talk trash like Devin Booker? Did? But individually, I was hooping. Okay, I went like five for six from three point line. I ended like with seventeen points, and we were going against this the undefeated team of the league. Yeah, like they were five and zero, oh. and man. They had a D1 player. used to play at Cincinnati. Jesus. You play against D1 players? Jesus, man. That There was a point in that game, in our game last night, where he made five threes in a row. Shit. See, DeAndre, we're lucky because we play a flag football and there are shit rules that state <laughs> college oh, players, yeah, yeah. former college athletes cannot be in our flag football league for they that exact sure, reason. Sure it is. Fun recreational league. You are not getting no damn B one athletes out there. Even even though I I crossed through, I snuck in. But you know, um, I didn't I didn't play D one. But you know, I should have. If if not for my injuries back in the day, you know, I'm one of them types. If man, if my if coach my injuries didn't flare up, man, if my coach didn't play me, man, hey, bro, I would have I would have been D one. I would have been to the league. You know, man. So, but, I, but I was no. talking my try. I hit him with that. Mikael Bridges celebration. I hit threes, man. Did you get up in his face like Devin Booker did against Luca? Hmm? Did you get up in his face like Booker did against Luca? No. Well, I smiled at him and I said, yeah, bro, let's, <laughs> let's hoop. Whoa, wait, let me rephrase mm-hmm. that. Did you wait like Booker when there are only three minutes in the game left to talk trash? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> bro, that was... Hey, hey, don't worry, don't worry Alec. We're going to be, t- be coming back here every now and then when we do our, our shows talking about how our flag football uh, games went. Yeah, maybe hopefully, we'll win a game yeah. this year. If we win a game, hopefully. that's already when a, yeah. That's, what that's day is it. what days are y'all games again? Uh, um, when what days are our games on Mondays? Uh, Wednesday this year. Wednesday. Damn. Yeah, Wednesdays. Damn. Wednesday. Yeah. But hey, you know, if we win a game, that's already a step forward. No matter how you cut it. Exactly. Exactly, bro. Yeah. Speaking that's of, all we, that's all we can do is improve. Speaking of, of improving. Uh, the quarterback market, gentlemen, has improved quite a bit uh, over the last couple of days. Obviously, we've seen guys like uh, Geno Smith re up with Seattle. Uh, Daniel Jones re up with the Giants and got a huge contract. Uh, Derek Carr has switched from the Raiders. He now joins the Saints. Uh, and that was the first big quarterback domino to fall. Um, obviously, we'll have to wait and see what happens with Aaron Rodgers as him and the Jets continue to talk. Uh, and then obviously Lamar Jackson, that situation is kind of a weird one, if you will. That's just something we haven't seen. So um, yep. I'll let you, I'll throw it out there. You guys kind of just take it. Which direction do we want to go down first? Who, which quarterback do we want to discuss first? Um, Personally, I understand, you know, Danny Dimes, Vanilla Vic, Daniel Jones only had a whopping 14 touchdowns, but he showed great efficiency this season. He looked very mature in the pocket. And when I'm like, I, I was telling you before the show, Alec, I was watching that playoff game against Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I have never seen him perform better than that before. Right. And I think. <laughs> AC just scared the ever loving God out of me. And I, and I believe the team was, the team was behind his back. This mm-hmm. season, something that he got, and he has the confidence now. And hopefully, you know, Brian Dable can keep that locker room intact. And I believe everybody will be, you know, eating their own words when they said that it was a bit overpriced or ridiculous. So so you're very much like for Daniel Joe. You think it's worth it then, right? Yeah. 
Okay. So uh, we have the numbers. These are the numbers for Daniel Jones. Uh, four year contract worth 160 million. Uh, 82 is guaranteed at signing, averaging out to about 40 a year. And if you get into the advanced, you know, numbers of it, it's essentially like a three year deal for the Giants. But obviously, mm-hmm. um, I mean, Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones is a guy who, with limited wide receivers this year and kind of really his only weapon being Saquon, I think you mentioned it, Nick. He did show some improvements, um, and whether that was him or Brian DeBall's offense, um, he certainly warranted another chance to start for the Giants this year. Um, he got he got the contract he wanted. You know, I think we all thought maybe he would have gotten a 30 to 35 million dollar deal but you know he asked for 40 and uh, he get he gets right around it per year so um it's 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 essentially the same deal Dak Prescott got from the Cowboys yeah. when you look at the no numbers way. and everything so um yeah i think it's interesting DeAndre let me ask you this then so Daniel Jones he gets his deal um yeah. where do you rank him among NFC East quarterbacks then Damn. <laughs> I mean, he's definitely third. I mean, right now, Washington doesn't really have, I mean, what, Sam Howell? So he got to be third. I can't put him any higher than three. Okay. So let me ask you, what are your thoughts on the contract? Did you, did you, did you think it was worth it for the Giants to go and lock up, uh, as Nick calls him, Vanilla Vic? See, Vanilla Vic. Oh, damn. I never I never heard something like that that's before. What, that's man. what Saquon calls him, man. <laughs> really? I'm being so serious. I think I'm just going to stick with Danny Dimes, even though he don't throw dimes like that either. But, you know, it's close. Um, <laughs> now, I, I'm, I don't know. I think I'm, I don't like the the four years part because, you know, that means you're tied down to this man for four years. And, you know, looking at his contract right now, in his last year, he's going to be making close to $46 million. So... I, I think more – I would have leaned more towards giving Daniel Jones the franchise tag. I know that uh, that means I have to give Saquon Barkley a, a long-term deal or, or you know. Um, but I have seen Saquon be productive more years than I have seen Daniel. Like this is his one year, you know, first year. Obviously, he had a lack of receiving talent. Um, so Man. with what he was able to accomplish, it is nice to see. But then you're also wondering – if I give him the the group, you know, giving them give him the receiving core, and he doesn't show uh, an improvement, and this team doesn't really improve with that, then guess what? I'm tied down to this man for another two years after, or three years after next season. Yeah, and I think it's kind of interesting how I think Daniel Jones maybe played too good this year in the sense of I think going into the year, if the Giants thought, okay. If Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones shows us some improvement, but we're still picking in the top 10, top 15, then maybe let's see what quarterbacks are there available. We can draft one, maybe tag Daniel Jones and let them duke it out and just see what happens. But uh, nonetheless, Daniel Jones was a big reason why the Giants went on this little big this big run this year where they started off, uh, what, 7-0, and mm-hmm. uh, got them to the playoffs. They won a road playoff game against, you know, what, pe- what was it, 13-win Minnesota team. Mm-hmm. So... Um, he very much was a big reason why and how that happened. Um, and again, maybe you overpay for your guy, but that's the NFL market nowadays, especially at the quarterback position. You have to keep paying, uh, for your quarterback and, you know, wait till next year when Burrow and Jalen Hurts and Herbert get their deals done. Um, (laughs) it'll make Daniel Jones deal look like, you know, chump change at that point. So, um, It'll be interesting. The Giants are an interesting team because they, you know, they have their quarterback and running back locked up now. They have a defense. You have, I think we'd all agree, the right coach in that building at Brian DeBall. Now it's about like what DeAndre mentioned earlier. Can you get some better receivers around Dan and Jones? Really kind of give him a a more um what's the word? Uh kind of more fair criticism going into next year, you know, with some Average to above average NFL receivers, man. Yeah. Because I mean, because if you think about it, like he had sell, why? Because his expectations heading into this year were low with the the talent that he had at wide receiver. Um, so that net, going into next season, you know, when he has those receivers, like our expectations are going to be really high for this guy to to take a bit step and improve and get this team 
uh, farther than what they made it this year, which this year they made it all the way to the division or they made it to the divisional round. So, Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I, I got faith. You got faith. I do. You got faith. Uh, vanilla Vic. You got faith. And also, you got to look at. They could have gave it to Saquon, but he had like. I understand he he came back very healthy this season, but his injuries in the past potentially can scare you. Given the running back, because you never want to pay. Yeah. The running right. back, yeah. Because running backs nowadays, like, look at the news about Zeke. Like his legs are almost dead, and yeah. you can tell that taking on a big workload like that, the Giants need to get a good backup running back because they need to realize that you know, it's not an easy position to play, and it really does cause damage to an individual. Yeah. So I believe tagging Saquon was good because they want to see if he can stay healthy. Then he will definitely mm-hmm. get that big contract. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was some interest. The Giants, again, I think we all agree they overshot the expectations this year, going from a top five team in the draft every year, picking wise, to a team that won a playoff game on the road. And, uh, you know, they lost in the divisional round, but, you know, nonetheless, they were there. Um, and let's talk about Derek Carr real quick. So, obviously, <laughs> as DeAndre knows pretty well, Javante. His brother, who's a Raiders fan, as you guys know, yep. uh, <laughs> was probably quite happy to see Derek Carr leave, I'd imagine. Uh, but yep. as the saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure. So uh, I, I, w- I will gladly take Derek Carr as he signed a four-year deal with the New Orleans Saints, uh, averaging out to just about 37 and a half um, per year. It's up to 150 total uh, total uh, total money with the um, incentives included, and if you again look at the kind of the money and way it's set up, it's a three year deal worth 33 ish, give or take, uh, kind of in that Kirk Cousins range as far as money is concerned. So I think that's probably just about fair for what Derek Carr is. Yeah, and uh, for me, I think this is a great move. The Saints right away from the beginning showed Derek Carr they were invested in him 100. percent um obviously the Jets came in very late, but the Jets have their eyes set on Aaron Rodgers. And I think what's more interesting about this kind of not really it's not even Derek Carr itself. The one thing I'm gonna touch on touch on real quick is Michael Thomas, because the reports have come out that Mike Thomas is wanting to or this they already have talked about renegotiating his contract with the Saints to come back to New Orleans and David Carr said on a podcast that Mike Thomas and Tyra Matthew were two players that reached out to Derek Carr personally and pitched him to come to New Orleans. So (laughs) DeAndre throwing his hands up. You're probably thinking, how can the Saints do this when they're 30 over the cap? Doesn't make any (laughs) sense whatsoever. But we are the cap gods. You know, the Rams won their Super Bowl, got cute, but we are the gods of doing this. But um I think Derek Carr right now makes you the best team in that division. And what is right now kind of a wide open conference in the NFC. Uh, Should be y'all's for the taking. Yeah, I think the Saints, if they make the right moves, uh, draft well, then, you know, they could be making some noise. But I think for sure this was the first big step for them in finding quarterback. And once again, pushing down the cap and not rebuilding because we just simply refuse to rebuild for this exact reason. Now we have Derek Carr, who probably right now is probably the second best quarterback in Saints history <laughs> behind Drew Brees. Behind which, Brees. Yeah, which tells you everything you need to know about our franchise's history. Also, we have not drafted a quarterback in the first round since Archie Manning. So, oh. again, that just <laughs> tells you everything you need to know about our history. It's not very hey, good. Put some, put some respect on my guy Aaron Brooks's name. Facts, 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 <laughs> facts. He's probably third. Derek Carr's probably third right now behind Eric Brooks with facts. Okay. I would say, uh, I would say no, I've always been a fan of Derek Carr. Yeah. Not just his game, but you can tell that a lot of players respect him. Yeah. You can tell that he is a good locker room guy. And he's honestly just a good guy overall. I believe ever since y'all, ever since Breeze, you know, left the game, 
Yeah. Y'all been missing that leader. Y'all yeah, been, Jameis was not it. <laughs> gonna go eat a W. Gonna go eat a W. No, not Yeah, him. Jameis was not it. And that's what I believe <laughs> Derek Carr is gonna provide. He's gonna provide that good leadership. And his decision making is very questionable sometimes. Very questionable. But if he can provide that leadership stability yeah and yeah. stay healthy because he's had his injuries in the past as well then i see the saints being a playoff team next year yeah for sure yeah deandre let me get your take on that now well uh <laughs> this is a good fit for Derek carr you know he played he goes back to a, it's more familiar being familiar with uh the coaching staff you know dennis allen is a guy who drafted him when he was in uh oakland and um you know, Dennis Allen was also a guy that get, went with Derek Carr, you know, when they had when it was preseason battles, either Matt Schaub or Derek Carr, who was going to start week one. He settled with Derek Carr, the second round pick, um, and he, he was solid his rookie year. And then he obviously when they brought in Jack Del Rio, he had that close to MVP season before uh, suffering that ankle injury before the right before the playoffs started. Right. Um, yep. So uh, we have seen Derek Carr, you know, on like a great level we've we've seen him play i don't think he'll ever reach that again but i do think some of those years in in vegas especially when he was an actual pro bowler, bowler not this year when uh, when he was a replacement level pro bowl player because everybody else was dropping out but when he was actually earned the pro bowl uh spot i do think he can re- recreate some of those years and i and um you know when we look at Derek carr and what he's had at defensively all these years when he was in oakland and vegas <laughs> He didn't have nothing there <laughs> near, near the no bottom good. every year. Yeah. 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 And um, so I, I think it's easy. It's going to be a lot easier, especially going up against some of these NFC teams, NFC South uh, opponents compared to facing Pat Mahomes and facing Justin Herberts. Cause you're not, you're not going through or dealing with shootouts every weekend. And, 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 and Russell Wilson. Yeah. And Russell Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I, I mean, he won. Didn't they beat the Broncos both times? They weren't a problem. <laughs> yeah, they did. Problem. Yeah, they did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I mean, I, I just look at it. I, I don't think he faces as much pressure, especially um, knowing that he has a defense that can, um, you know, get them off the field or not get them off the field, but you know, like give give them put them in more comfortable positions uh, moving forward. So. Uh, this is probably again the most talented defense that he's ever going to be a part of. Um, offensively, Saints might need to still look at some weapons at receiver. I know um, they got Chris Olave, who was great. Rashid Chahi is underrated. He's a deep threat that Derek Carr can fully utilize. Um, I don't know if Jarvis is coming back. So Michael Thomas. I don't. I don't know. Well, I don't know what is up with y'all and Michael Thomas, bro. I would have given up on him. I, I would give up on him this offseason. There's no point. And, and, and really quick, let me just say this. I think it's funny you mentioned that, Yonja, because I think I thought they were done. Like, I thought when they restructured his contract at the end of the season, I think it was more of a, hey, we're going to give you this game check in cash. You provide us some short-term cap relief to let us spend some money in the next couple of years. We'll cut you. You can go find wherever you want to go and try and, you know, uh, you know, make the best out of your career what's left. Um, but then obviously I think going into the off season, I think Derek Carr was the best option for the Saints as far as quarterbacks are concerned. It was probably the best they could do. Mm-hmm. Uh I think yeah. people who wanted Lamar and Aaron Rodgers, that was way too far fetched, I think was even possible. But Derek Carr was the best case scenario. And I think that was enough for Michael Thomas to go, you know what, let's let, let's talk about this contract. Give me a heavily incentive based deal and put me because we saw what he did with Devontae Adams last year. You know, mm-hmm. Michael Thomas could easily put up numbers, not maybe, maybe not similarly close to Devontae, but Mike Thomas can still be a very good wide receiver mm-hmm. in the NFL. So I think <laughs> as you as you mentioned, DeAndre, this should have been the last time we've we, we've seen Mike Thomas in a Saints uniform, but now uh, I think it's more likely that he comes back, if anything, just because for the Saints, there's no real market as far as free agent receivers are concerned. So if you do lose Mike Thomas, you need a big bodied possession guy to replace him with. And they, there's just simply not enough of that, whether it's the draft or free agency. 
That is fair, but again, you're you're looking at a guy that has known injury histories throughout his career. So it's a, it's a big chance. It's a big risk taking him on again um, when you could potentially you because they don't they have like an out this off season where they can move on from him without like suffering that much. Yeah, uh, yeah, because uh, before the end of the season they restructured his contract. What was left of it to where this would be the out, and then Mike Thomas got some cash. And this is kind of their mutual agreement to splitting up. But now that's looking like it might change. Yeah, see, I don't know about that, man. I would just cut my losses, move on, try to find a, a solid. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly Mike Thomas level, but a solid rece- replacement receiver. Uh, I don't know who's a free agent those offseason. Marvin Jones from Jacksonville wouldn't be a bad option. Um yeah, the receiving core, receiving free agent class isn't looking too good. But draft, the draft is very deep. So yeah, but no, we're yeah. just gonna we're gonna run it back. <laughs> we're gonna run it back, and I think you're putting all your chips in one basket, man. The Mike Thomas basket. It's like it's like Cowboy fans and Zeke. <laughs> we just can't we can't get rid of them no matter what. But uh, there's something both of you have mentioned. I think is very kind of true and it's something i really didn't think about until after it was announced but i think um stability is a big thing between Carr and the saints you know obviously as you mentioned deandre he's been through so many coaches you know and coordinator started his time in with the raiders uh mm-hmm. coming here to new orleans where Pete car michael jr was apparently the, the big selling point for Derek Carr as a guy who said hey this offense was ran by drew Brees for so many years uh, we maybe got spoiled and, and gave Breeze, you know, two or three plays in the huddle. He had complete command of the offense. Whatever he wanted to call, he ran. Um, and, you know, nothing against Jameis or Annie Dalton or Taysom Hill or Ian Book, but the Saints simply just haven't had that since Drew Brees left, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. Nick. And I think that was the big selling point to Carr was, hey, you come here, this offense is yours to command. You have the veteran experience. You've seen it all. You can play at this right. level, and uh, we and I think it might that might do that. That might be why the Saints' offense has struggled so much since Breeze left. It wasn't just simply the quarterback play, but it's more of his IQ, his you know, his command of the offense, the adjustments, everything about it just was not there. Yeah, and, and like Derek Carr, like he's. He's a quarterback where he can have an occasional bid game, you know, like a, a high scoring shootout. He has occasion. He can he can do that occasionally. But when you asked him to do that every week, which he ha- he's been doing the past, well, since Andy Reid and the Chiefs took over with Pat Mahomes and everything, he hasn't been able to compete like that. So I think now playing in a division where like in just a conference in general where he doesn't really have to worry about scoring every possession because he knows he has a defense that can limit those points, limit those, um, those long drives, you know? So I, th- I think it could work in new Orleans. Um, it's a big, it's a big, if it's a big risk just because, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, 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 uh, he wants to hate all the saints so bad, but he can't. Another, he another wants to hate. <laughs> yeah, it ain't a big risk. You know, and I'm, 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 I'm thinking about somebody else being a big risk, but you good. You good. Yeah. <laughs> another an, another thing about the Saints, I like is, is Alvin Kamara good? Uh so <laughs> that's that's a tricky question. <laughs> good can be determined in so many different ways. Um, so obviously, I think the biggest thing for the Saints going into the offseason is going to be a backup running back, and it's strictly mm-hmm. because Kamara is probably going to face some league issues. Uh, because of his brawl in Vegas yeah. a couple of years ago. That looks like it's finally going to come up into court. Um, and he was uh, indicted, which means, you know, the jury. And I don't know enough about the legal stuff to talk about it, but I just know that they they, they showed the jury, and the jury said, yeah, he definitely did that. <laughs> oh, the video, <laughs> and, uh, the video, yeah, the video proves out. it. Pretty, <laughs> yeah, he definitely beat up that guy. <laughs> and uh, so uh, usually the NFL likes to wait for the, the, the courts to play this out first before they get involved. But yeah. obviously... He's probably going to be suspended for, I'd say, probably four to six games. Um, and with an aging Mark Ingram, who's going to be free agent, the Saints just can't a- approach the offseason, or I'm sorry, the season when it starts with really no planet running back. You have to try and get somebody 
uh, it's a very deep free agent running back class or, uh, you know, in the draft, you have Bijan Robinson, obviously Jameer Gibbs from Alabama, uh, mm-hmm. Miller from TCU. There are so many good backs in the draft. This is, might be one of the deeper running back classes we've yeah. seen in a while. And I think DeAndre would agree with that being a former running back, but uh, yeah. it's, it's a very deep class of running backs. Nonetheless, you can find talent in any of these, early, in any of these rounds, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some alternatives in free agency too, because you know Damian Harris uh, from the Patriots. He's a free agent. I think he'd be a good fit uh, to work in a tandem with Alvin Kamara. Um, Leonard Fournette is now a free agent. Yeah, Louisiana native. <laughs> yeah, Louisiana native. So he he could be a solid you know fill in for those first four or yeah. four to six games uh, potentially. So, and I mean I'm not gonna say it's ha- gonna happen, but there is an off chance. You know, I think jail time could be something, could be nothing, and I really don't know how <laughs> how you go <laughs> into a draft or a free agency period and plan for that. But because yeah, it's come on, you know, it's good that y'all got Derek Carr, but like quarterback can't just be the only option for yeah. offense. Like because Kamara, yeah. Kamara is, you know, he's a bad dude, right? And he can. He can take on a good workload, and it just looked like last season his head his head was not in it yeah. at all. And I think that also had a lot to do with the quarterback play as well, because you know whether uh, when Andy Dalton played, it was a very safe, very conservative offense where they didn't take shots, they didn't turn the ball over, and it was very vanilla, generic. And then with Jameis, you just didn't know what you were getting with Jameis Winston, <laughs> and uh, it was just a tough year overall, all around for Kamara, but. Yeah. Uh, you're kind of hoping with Derek Carr and then maybe another receiver or two. Um, it opens it up more for him, but then also there's the whole legal thing. You got to see how that plays out first. But um, I think AK still he's still a great back. You just got to wait and see how all this stuff outside of football no, for shapes sure. up. Yeah, I I still believe y'all are gonna be y'all are gonna take that division. Yeah, we good. should hopefully. Oh, uh, Panthers. Oh. The, pan- the Panthers, the Panthers, depending what they would, depending what they do, a quarterback could be, you know, that their be. defense is pretty good. Yeah, let's yeah. Call the Brits. I think a lot of those teams in that division, we got to see what the quarter, what they, the quarterback market looks for them. Carolina, they still have a pretty competitive roster. Um, Tampa Bay, they still have some of those guys that were in a Super Bowl what two years ago. If they get someone like a, a Jimmy G as an alternative, I still think they're. Um, a team that could potentially challenge for that division crown and Atlanta, Atlanta would look pretty good last year. Those first, no, they over, they over exceeded last year. The Falcons. Yeah. Did. Did. yeah. yeah, the Falcons yeah. So if, if, if Desmond Ritter can take another bit step, then they're a team to watch for, uh, as well. So you're saying we go from the worst division of football to potentially <laughs> one of the best is what you're saying. DeAndre. Well, I said, if, if everything aligns, then Yes. Then it, it could be one of those A. So we're the A. Know. We're, we're going to be the AFC West of the NFC. I like it. I mean, I wouldn't say that. I don't think there's going to be like <laughs> two teams that. I, I'm not. I don't think there's going to be two teams that have like ten wins for the season in that division. I think it's more going to be like, hey, you got you got the division title at nine and <laughs> nine and eight. <laughs> very true. Very First, true. Nine and eight. <laughs> ten and ten, very ten true. And but seven, um. Yeah, so obviously the Saints made that move with Derek Carr, Mm -hmm. and the Jets were talking to Derek Carr. Of course, they're waiting to see what happens with Aaron Rodgers. It's come out the last couple of days that the Rodgers and and the Jets, um, the Rodgers, (laughs) the Jets and Aaron Rodgers have been talking uh, kind of about what they can see, uh, how a trade would look like. And it's been reported that Green Bay would maybe take something as simple as a first round pick just because there's no real market for Aaron Rodgers besides the Jets. And you'd rather get something than him retiring at nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of weird how Rodgers has spent 15 years at Green Bay, the same am- same amount as Brett Favre did before Favre went to the Jets uh, for that one year in 08. And, you know, he did some things, played football, and I'll just leave it at that. You can Google what he did in New York. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what Brett Favre did um, in New York besides play for the Jets. Um, but yeah, certainly, I mean, if you add Aaron Rodgers into that division alone where you have Josh Allen 
and the Bills, who are an electric team. Miami is a very good team, and they made a play a very deep run last. Well, not deep, but they were a very good team last year. They almost beat Buffalo in the in the wild card. Yep. And then your last hurdle will be Bill Belichick. With huh? a third string, Alec. With, oh, third string going with the third string quarterback. I'm giving you respect. <laughs> but I, And your last hurdle will be Bill Belichick, of all people. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to ask you guys, if Rodgers were to go to the Jets, realistically, what are the ex- expectations for the Jets with Aaron Rodgers? Oh, contenders. Uh, you think so? I Automatic? Think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, with, the, with how it looks, yes, the roster – they look like contenders. Now, Now, obviously, things can – like Russell Wilson. We looked at Russell Wilson in Denver. We thought, oh, man, Russell, the Broncos are going to be a contending team. And then yeah, look what happened. You saw, you, saw, you, saw, you saw what it was like on field, and it was a complete different story. So the same thing could happen in New York. Maybe the, maybe New York is too big for Aaron Rodgers, you know, the fans and everything. Uh, I don't know how he would handle criticism there. <laughs> if he throws what if he goes a game throwing two pits i don't know how the the fans in green bay are a little more receptive than the ones in new york and let's be honest there hey Deon- um, hey deandre i got some dolphins news oh what's up uh the miami dolphins just announced that they've informed quarterback Tua a tuck of viola that they are picking up his fifth year option oh snap so okay. hey that's your guy then right like, right. you don't that's you don't do that if that's your guy <laughs> And that's yeah, facts. That's your guy. I've been mean, Mike Rodano preached it all all season how he thinks this offense is built for Tua, but we'll get we'll we'll go back to Tua, but but go ahead, Yadra, continue. Yeah, I mean, I, we look at this Jets roster. I mean, obviously he has a better uh, receiving core. He would have a better receiving core than the one he had in Green Bay. Uh, Garrett Wilson is a is a emerging talent in this league, rookie mm-hmm. of the year. Um, defensively, great. They're a great unit, coached by Robert Sala, and them. So. I, I think they could challenge for the AFC title. Um, <laughs> as a Dolphins fan, I might be biased here, but I, I'll still put Miami above them. But th- they'll be a, they'll be a contender for sure, along with Miami. Um, and people at one point they were what seven and three, seven and two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Zach Wilson came along and mm-hmm. and did what he did. Man, it's Mike White show. Anywho, but um, <laughs> the Mike White. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has an attitude problem. That's fair. He does. It's fair. And I understand that, you know, you want a Super Bowl, you're an all time quarterback, you one got, MVP. What, four MVPs, right? Four yeah. MVPs. It's just, bro, there's a time, there's a, there's a moment where you got to know you are getting old. And you can either keep that Brady mentality. Or you can change it up and make something new, make something better. Because all of this news of him doing psychedelics, all of the darkness retreat, mm-hmm. dude, I could I could care less. I really could. All you have to do yeah. really, because you would see him get in screaming arguments with Matt LaFleur, like, or his head coach, I don't remember his name. But it was, it's just like that kind of, pulls team chemistry down and i'm big on team chemistry because team chemistry can carry a team all the way to the top it really can like that's that's how i believe the giants were so successful last year and the jets have came out sauce gardner Brees hall you know all of them they want him and he should look at that and say hey these young guys want me and you shouldn't be going there as the king you should go in there as a leader that you should be and you should know yeah. that Brees Hall is coming off, you know, ACL tear, but that man is a monster. Probably mm-hmm. one of the best running backs he he would have. I respect Aaron Jones a lot, but for sure. But I believe it would be a good move. There, there will be some bad losses in there if he does go. Because it's new team, new feel. And DeAndre's right. <laughs> new York is not an easy market to nope. be loved in. You have one bad game. Oh man, they'll burn your jersey. You have, <laughs> but it's just about your attitude. Yeah. Because Aaron Rodgers has always had attitude. He's always put himself on a pedestal, and he's he's honestly like not liked by many people. His, yeah. his, including like, including teammates in Green Bay. Yeah, and his, his yeah. family too, man. Yeah. Yeah, and to, to to add to Nick's point, I mean, 
you look at Aaron Rodgers' antics and the, the way he acted in Green Bay, like like this man was was God or something. Because mm-hmm. you know he would show up to a training camp, like he he wouldn't he would go to the off season workouts. Um, he would wait till like training camp to to show up. So. I don't know if he can do that in New York, and if he does, but that probably rub the team the wrong way, especially when you got these new guys, these young receivers who who are looking for guidance, who are looking mm-hmm. for, like Nick said, a leader. And if you're not there because you're, that's not your ritual. That's not that's not your routine of how you approach the the season, um, approach the season and the off season. So I, I don't know. I don't know if that Ritual's that's something that Aaron Rodgers can Rogers. change. <laughs> Yeah, and I think, you know, it, both of you made some great points. And I think for Rodgers, as you mentioned, Nick, I think for him, he can't go in as the arrogant, you know, yeah. future Hall of Famer that thinks he's just the greatest thing since sliced bread. When in reality, no, it's like you won your Super Bowl, you know, back in 2010. You've had several home playoff losses. You know, you've you've had some, you know, injury, some injury, some injury riddled years. You held the Packers hostage, you know, the three three last off seasons because you're deciding yeah. I want to come back a player or not. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just a lot that goes into this, and his market is not what probably what he thought it was. Like I think Aaron Rodgers thought he had the the, the his pick of wherever he wanted to go, and that hasn't been the case at all. You know, it's been the Jets or Green Bay's looking to play Jordan Love and get some snaps at, and see what they have in him. So. You know, yeah. like yeah. the way media portrays all these quarterbacks, they portray them as either this, either the savior, or they portray them as you know the downfall. You know, yeah. And as I, I've, I've literally grown. We've all grown up watching Aaron Rodgers come to who he is, and there's not really been one person to ever call him out and say he is the reason why your team is a handicap right now. Yeah. There's not. Yeah. It's always been, oh, his coach or the defense or his receiving core. He needs to be put because I, I blame him. I blame him for this season. His attitude was terrible. Like, bruh, just because a, a rookie wide receiver drops a wide open pass, okay, chew his head off. But you have to ignite the fire back in him yeah. to do good. The best game I literally saw him play all season was against Dallas. That was vintage Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. And that was probably more of despite of uh, in spite of Mike McCarthy. Yeah. Being the coach exactly. for the Cowboys. Yeah. His just, vendetta against McCarthy. I just feel like he feels like he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder anymore. He he owns nothing to anybody. And he needs to know that there is. Because if you still want to yeah. be great you got to own up to your failures and become a leader that people want you to be yeah and i think yeah. you know uh, you know all throughout this year you know you go back and watch packer games and i mean you, you, you just mentioned it nick how there are there were throws that aaron Rodgers made that were egregious and should not have been made and mistakes on his part but all throughout the year in green bay it was the young wide receivers mm-hmm. or a lack of running game from Aaron Jones or, you know, whatever. And, you know, throughout his entire career, we get, like you just mentioned, we give him the excuses of, you know, McCarthy was the problem. That's why they moved up from Mike McCarthy. Um, but in reality, the guys had, you know, three or four home playoff losses. And mm-hmm. we were supposed to view green. Uh, we we're supposed to view Lambo as like this frozen tundra wasteland in December and January. Where you do not want to go play. But you could beat the Packers at home in the playoffs. The Giants did it. The Niners did it yep. twice. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do it. Uh, and I just think, all in all, there's a reason why I think you look at this era of quarterbacks, and most people will tell you it's the Brady, Brady, Manning, Breeze era of quarterback play. It's not you don't put Rodgers in that conversation. Sure, he's stupid, uber talented. But the other three had bad qualities that Rodgers just simply never had. Man, you can say that again. And, and to add on, because y'all mentioned about like the how the Jets are the only team in the market that's currently trying to pursue Aaron Rodgers, and the reason why I, I think it makes sense why they are is because you look at the Jets and, and what options they have. Every other every other team that has a, a quarterback need on the market, 
they're contemplating whether to add a veteran. They also have uh, a high draft pick where they can uh, potentially select a quarterback in the draft. The Jets, I don't think they can really take another chance at drafting a quarterback. So it's pretty much Aaron Rodgers or, or bust for this offseason. For- or Matthew Stafford. The Rams are talking yeah. about. Him. I don't. The Rams are talking about moving him, but I don't see yeah, Matthew I, Stafford wanting to go to New York. I don't. Yeah. But personally, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like with McVay sticking around, I feel like that that buys Stafford at least another year or two with McVay. So, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I think with the Jets, it's Rodgers or bust. And I think, you know, we're all kind of tired of this every offseason where it's like, oh, is he going to play or not? Is he going to come back or not? We're just make a decision, you know, mm-hmm. whether you want to retire or go play, make a decision. And for my sake, and for your sake as well, go to the AFC. <laughs> <laughs> Le- leave the NFC alone. Go to the AFC and fight for a wild card spot every year there because... You give DeAndre some problems. Yeah, give DeAndre you- some problems. But here's the, th- here's the thing. You know, go to the <laughs> AFC and go be the third best team in that division because mm-hmm. right now I- I'll take Buffalo over the Jets with Rodgers. I'll take Miami over uh, the Jets. Go fight with New England for that third place spot. Mm-hmm. You're right. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you, Alec. Hey, appreciate it, bro. You know, that's, that's I, just a I, fact. I, I, don't, I don't see. Fact. I don't see. I don't see Aaron Rodgers and the Jets still. I still don't see the the Jets being a threat to us. I still think we, at the end of the day, we can be a better team, especially if we make some moves this offseason, uh, shoring up that defense, and also Vid Vangio was already the biggest addition that we could make this damn offseason. Yep. Uh, but it's funny. It's funny, actually, when you mentioned, because you said, what, 15 years, right, for Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers both? Yeah. And it's it's funny to me because of the fact that uh, Aaron Rodgers tried so much to distance himself from being compared to Brett Favre. <laughs> and now he's he's just one step closer to being compared to Brett Favre again. I mean, both of them won their Super Bowls early on in their career in Green Bay, 15 yep. years of the franchise. <laughs> And I think <laughs> I think at the end of each of the careers, respectively, I think people grew tired of them. Yep. But they grew tired of Favre. They grew tired of Rodgers. And uh, you know who would have thought that team that probably put him out of their misery was Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun team, man. So I mean, who knows? We'll see. But uh, yeah, it looks like retirement or the Jets for Rodgers. Um, and then. Uh, uh, a couple more things we'll hit on. Uh, obviously, Geno Smith, Nick, you got your quarterback locked up for three more years, and Seattle's kind of in this weird position to where, thanks to Denver sucking uh, and riding, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, they rode all the way to that, th- uh, what, the fifth overall pick, if I'm right? Broncos country. That's yeah. Right. So now Seattle's in a position to where they could probably draft a quarterback if they really wanted to, because ob- obviously Geno is in the long term answer. And Gino has openly said he's open to mentoring a rookie if they do draft one. So now you're kind of in this position where you have your bridge guy who, you know, was a Pro Bowl caliber player last year. And you could potentially take your pick of whoever you want quarterback wise in the top five. I believe how how you said Gino said he'll be a mentor is one of the best things I ever heard from a person coming off their best year. Because he he came in, literally, quote, quote of the damn year, said, they wrote me off, I didn't write back. <laughs> and he took the he took a Seahawks team that people believe were going to be terrible without Russell Wilson. Us included, DeAndre. Yeah, we thought, took we, him, we took, thought they were going to be bad. Took him to the playoffs and got this b- nice contract, won a, one comeback play of the year, and said, drop, drop the QB, I'll be fine. That tells me Geno Smith got the flowers that he wanted. Because I was telling you before, show that there needs to be, like, quarterbacks need to realize, players in general, athletes in, in general need to realize that you aren't going to, you're not going to win a championship. You're not going to win an MVP. You're not going to be that superstar caliber player that kids look up to or buy your jersey. But what you can do is you can help the team by doing little things. And Geno... His attitude has probably, you know, he's been dumb in the past. We're all young and dumb. But he realizes that, hey, this is the team that believes in me. And I want to keep helping this team, even if that's not with me. And that's how I believe every single... Because you look at Patrick Mahomes. People, 
personally, I don't like Patrick Mahomes because he's so damn good. He's good. Not only good on the field, that man is a leader. He is with his raspy voice. And then I'm Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> and then Jalen, you got Jalen Hurts. Mm-hmm. I see that man because I watch a lot of press conferences, like athletes' interviews. That is a grown man who has worked, who has done nothing but work hard to get to where he is today. Mm -hmm. And you see shows that on the football field. I was calling them. I was calling the Eagles, Jalen Hurts, frauds. I was all year. And then they beat the living crap out of the Giants. I believe the Giants were going to win. Glad I didn't put money on it. But I believe the Giants were going to win because I believed the Eagles – Head coach is the is the only reason the Eagles are still good with bad guys. But back to Gino. What he said is proven that how an athlete should be. Because they have to realize that it's not nothing's ever guaranteed. And rainbows and sunshine and nothing's guaranteed. Yeah. You have to be a leader, even if that's mean you're not the answer. That's very uh, Alex Smith esque, right? I think when Kansas mm-hmm. City traded up and drafted Patrick Mahomes. I think Alex Smith obviously knew that, okay, you know, he he's the go, future. He'd have to go shatter his leg, yeah. though. That was yeah. terrible. Yeah, but he, he knew he knew he wasn't the future in Kansas City, but whatever he could do to help Patrick Mahomes get up to speed to teach him, he was going to do. I mean, I mean, it's not like Ryan Tannehill. When the, <laughs> when the Titans drafted Malik Willis, Ryan Tannehill. It's <laughs> not my job. Ryan Tannehill <laughs> sat there and said, it's not my job to mentor Malik Willis. And I said, "Whoa, okay. If you're if you're Aaron Rodgers, I understand. You can say that. You've you, you've earned your spot, or you know whoever. But Ryan Tannehill, what have you done, yeah. DeAndre? I have a question for you, dude. What's up? Do you see it in Tua? Do I see? Do I see what? Like him being a leader. Oh, the it, him being the, a leader. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it. I saw. I saw enough, especially from from a couple of games this year. Um, you know, my favorite game is that Baltimore game. Yeah, that was, <laughs> you know, re- game, yeah. what two, two interceptions the first half um, and then goes on to throw six touchdowns and lead his team to an improbable comeback victory, uh, which amazing plays. Um, I, I, I think another year with Mike McDaniel in that system, I, I do think yep. I, they need help and more consistency, especially as far as establishing the run game. Because that was a problem, like especially last year, um, when they faced certain teams, they abandoned it early, and that kind of put Tua force you. It forced Tua to to make a lot more plays than what he needed to be or needed to do. You know, so um, obviously, I, I think if he could stay healthy, I think I still I think he could be a top fifteen quarterback in this league easily. I believe uh, Mike McDaniel is y'all savior. He he really is because. If y'all didn't get him, I see the way he talks to Tua, and Tua just listens. Tua takes in yeah. every single word that he says to him, yeah, and it fuels him, and it puts the confidence that he's been needing. Because I can't lie, man, Tua, is, he'd be making some very ugly throws. <laughs> but like my damn what he said, he's like, your form is terrible. Like He told him his form used to be terrible. And he made him that highlight tape because, you know, he went to Mike Daniel and said, do I suck? And showed him every single highlight and told him, no, you don't. So I believe, I believe your team is good. Saints, Derek Carr, they got a leader. DeAndre, my, the Dolphins, they're making a leader. And Seahawks, well, they're just... You have a leader. They have a leader. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, to Nick's point about Tua, and obviously the news just broke that they picked up his fifth-year option. Um, And I think for me, because it feels like every time there's a quarterback rumor, people go, oh, is Miami in it? Miami's got to be involved in this, right? Like, Miami's got to be involved. And I think, again, I think something we've talked about before, and the reason why I was a big Tua stickler with DeAndre after they fired Brian Flores was Brian Flores did not want to a whatsoever. And I think as a player, uh, when you have a coach who does not believe in you whatsoever and doesn't give you a fair shot to begin with, 
and is looking for every reason to replace you or to bench you or whatever that might be, that just ruins your confidence no matter what you're doing. And I think with Mike McDaniel, um, it's, it seems like every time there's a rumor, he has to come out and say, Tua is our quarterback. We're, we're sticking with Tua. He's our guy. And yesterday, I was in a Zoom call. It's funny you brought this up, actually. I was in a Zoom call with a uh, former Vikings GM, Rick Spielman, and um, former Jets GM who's on ESPN, uh, Mike Tannenbaum, uh, through the Canal Street Chronicles. Where they had a Q&A. And somebody had who worked for uh, one of the Dolphins, uh, not like the official Dolphins website, but like a beat writer from Miami asked about, you know, the Tom Brady rumors, right? Like how if Brady were to come out, do you really think, you know, Miami would be the only or fair place for him to go to? And both of them have mentioned how Mike McDaniel is very set on Tua is his guy. He's He thinks this offense with Tyreek Kill with Jalen Waddle works with Tua specifically and that he, he that's his guy no matter what. So... Again, I think for them to pick up the fifth year as well, because you're paying them what twenty plus million for one year extra. That again, mm-hmm. that just instills confidence that this is your guy no matter what. His health, his his health is scary. It is scary. That, that's a that's that's a concern for mm-hmm. sure. It is scary, but if you can stay healthy, that'll be good. For yeah. A long, for yeah. A long and I think- Mm-hmm. Which it can be avoided with uh, the way he falls down because that's some that's something that was always like he's it's taking. Not, you know, it was always weird. He always fell a certain way where you're like, hey, he I always hit the guy. back of his head. Like he yeah, he, so, he took so ju- he took what jujitsu, taking, right? Yeah, he's taking judo classes this uh, this off season. Who would have thought like that? Because normally when they teach you. <laughs> Uh, like they get like a baseball sliding coach yeah. to teach you how to slide properly for a quarterback, but you, that's 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 an interesting different perspective. But that's, yeah. see, that's changing the game. That's showing we believe in him. So we gotta we gotta we gotta show him how to fall. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> but no, but I know, think uh, a test for me last year, like f- to know like two is the guy because like we play in the in the AFC. Uh, we play against teams like Buffalo, New England, and and New York. So I always wondered, oh how. How can he play up north in the cold weather? And then I saw that Thursday night game against Buffalo, and dude, Pat probably won't. That's to that Baltimore game and and um, the Buffalo game before in Miami. Mm-hmm. That was probably one of my favorite games from Tua this year. Man, I feel yeah, like but I think Tua that. he's shown you enough, regardless, mm-hmm. to you know warrant that fifth year option. I think, and now it's just yeah. a matter of keeping him healthy. One, especially you know considering all the hits he took last year, has to be your top priority. Upgrading that offensive line any way you can. Um, but no, I think Mike with Daniel and Tua, I think that's a relationship to where it works. And I think they both needed each other because as you mentioned, Nick, kind of in a weird way, he is the savior for Tua. Cause I'm not just really sure whoever else they would have brought in to be the head coach mm-hmm. would really have showed this much confidence in Tua being the guy as Mike with Daniel has, because again, I thought, he deserved that at least, you know, whether it was from anybody except Brian Flores because he did not believe in Tua whatsoever. <laughs> but it's good to see that. I'm happy for Tua. He deserves it. I'm happy for him. Yeah. And and to add on, because I didn't get to talk about uh, Gino, but I'm happy for him because, again, that's another guy who was doubted throughout his career, um, you know, especially how it started because, you know, this was a guy who showed up on draft day for opening night uh, for the first round and and went undraft didn't yep. get drafted the first round, uh, sat in the war room. The second day he got drafted by the Jets and uh, was still there. And just all the ups and downs that he's, he's had throughout his career. Mm. And sometimes it just takes that that um that right coach to have that leap of faith and belief in in, in a guy. And um, that's what Pete Carroll did this year. Um, so I'm, I'm happy for Gino and it's well-deserved because I look at some of the performances that he did this year, uh, and some of the throws he made, they were up there as far as some of the best. Like one of my favorites, uh, was that one and sad, sorry, Alec, but it was against new Orleans. The locket. Throwing, yeah. Yeah. throwing all the run to his left, yeah. hits lock it deep. Probably one of my favorite throws uh, from a quarterback this season. Yeah, for sure. I think Gino has certainly earned the contract. And again, if you're Seattle picking at five, uh, maybe Anthony Richardson, the guy who excelled at the combine, that could be somebody. Uh, mm-hmm. Or, you know, whoever whoever you want to take, you just now know that Gino is okay with it and Gino is willing to help however he can. Yep. Uh, hey, so, Alec, yeah. I, I got a bold prediction right now. What you got? 
Texans draft Anthony Richardson at one, number two. Uh, two? At number two. Or at the number one, either way. But Texans will be the first team to draft quarterback, and they'll take Anthony Richardson. I don't hate it because I know we're, we're going to get to it a little later, but Anthony Richardson is like a freak. Like him at the Combine, yeah. think about – like Cam. He's like Cam Newton, but more polished as a, as a passer. Mm-hmm. He's still got to develop, yep. and you know, obviously, uh, there's a lot more to his game that he needs to improve on. But coming out right now as a raw prospect, he's like Cam Newton, but a better passer. And that's insanely stupid to say, but it's true. Because the way I see it, I could see the Texans potential drive. I've heard that they they might uh, target a veteran quarterback, so. Jimmy Garoppolo could be a name. Jacoby Brissett to start for Richardson, maybe for a year. I, I, I like it. I, I, I don't. Be, hate I it. wouldn't be up to it. I don't hate it. The, the, what's even wilder to that is, say, if Houston takes Anthony Richardson at two or one or wherever, then the landslide begins for Bryce Young and Stroud. Like the bidding war will begin for one of those two guys. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That that will start draft night right then and there where the trades will start pouring in. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be crazy. Uh the the last bit of quarterback news we'll get into real quick. Lamar Jackson, obviously, this is a very unique situation to where we've never seen a quarterback at this age in his prime with all the accolades he's already accumulated. You know, wants a new contract and, you know, kind of been told no by a handful of teams already when it won't cost you anything to talk to him. And, you know, you could argue if you sign him the trade value of only two first round picks, that's less than what teams traded for Russell Wilson last year. So it's just kind of a weird situation. And I'll just throw it out there and get y'all's thoughts on it now. But Lamar Jackson, uh, where do we think he's going to go? How do you think all this is going to play out? See, I thought originally when he got the franchise you know the designated tag where he could still talk to teams and you know two second round two first round pits could be traded for him i initially thought that was a win-win for both teams for both lamar jackson and both for the ravens because he was able to to see what he was worth on the open market and if um he got the deal. Baltimore could match it if they wanted to. They could be like, oh, you know what? Okay, that's not too bad. Let's match it. Or he had to recuper- recuperate with two first-round pits, and Lamar Jackson gets his contract that he's been desiring this whole past two years. <laughs> um, however, it is strange to me that no teams are really interested in Lamar Jackson right now, when I think plenty of them should be. Mm-hmm. Like I think the commanders who – have what pit 16 in the draft. I think they should, they should be on the phone right now trying to get Lamar Jackson. Cause I think having Lamar Jackson on the commanders could put them at number two or number one in the division. Yeah. I just thought about something crazy. What's that? I don't know, man. There's a team out there with like three, well, really two quarterbacks. Well, they went through a roulette of quarterbacks this year, ended up with their third string got hurt, and they could have potentially enough to, you know, trade with Baltimore. I'm just thinking about the 49ers. But when I think about it, the 49ers, it didn't work with Kaepernick, but I'm not saying Kaepernick is like Lamar Jackson, mm-hmm. and it's not a, it's a different coach. Different, yeah. Different. But I don't know. I feel like, I feel like Brian Windhorst was like, what about – what about Utah? What's going on in? I'm like, what's going on in San Fran? Hold on a second. But yeah. it's, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a bad idea. I just don't. I hate what they're doing to him. Yeah, and I think he's a talent that just it's not fair. He's honestly being what, black blackballed. Ball? Yeah, blackballed in a league that eventually was going to happen, but it's just it's not fair to him. He did de- he deserves his money. MVP winner takes his team to the playoffs, and also, I, what was it? He has as many wins in his first three seasons as Brady or anyone. Yeah, yeah. Like I think in the span of years from when he started to now, he is the one of the best win loss ratio or records in NFL history yeah. in a four year span ish. Span span ish, <laughs> uh, and I think. I, I, it's tough because I see both sides of this. I look from 
the NFL, you know, GMs and owners, because think about it like this. If you do offer Lamar a contract, right? A, the money that is that you offer is pigeonholed. You so you can't make any moves really until this is decided is ultimately what happens. And then B, say if you do offer Lamar a contract, right? Well, what if Baltimore sits there and goes, okay, thanks. You made, you did all the hard work. You got his contract. You got him to agree on a, on a number. We're going to sign him to that. And thank you. And then by then, you know, all that time and the money you could have used in free agency is not for nothing because by then, you know, so much time has passed. Players have signed, yada, yada, yada. I mm-hmm. get that. And then also with Lamar representing himself without an agent, it's kind of harder because agents are kind of like the network between yeah. all yeah. NFL yeah, teams. They're that, they're that middle ground. Yeah. To kind of keep the balance of things. And it's, it's hard. It, it makes things rough. It makes things uh, kind of uncomfortable you know, with Lamar and the Ravens right now. Um, so I can see, I see why they're at this standstill. Um, however, let me ask you all this though, because being honest, Lamar wants that. <laughs> Lamar, Lamar wants that. Uh, he wants that he wants Deshaun, Jets, uh, Deshaun Watson contract. Mm-hmm. And do you think it's worth it? Because let's, let's also it's remember tough. that the last two seasons he's been, he's, he hasn't played a full 17 game schedule because he's been hurt and we know the type of player he is where he rely relies on his legs um and his mobility so you have to ask yourself is he worth it you know? mm, so okay uh deshaun watson's not even worth that money no he's not <laughs> but, <laughs> but cleveland cleveland <laughs> cleveland cleveland A- after rooting for them with baker going yay he made the playoffs they've made us all despise cleveland again somehow <laughs> they ruined that for us uh, to answer your question, DeAndre, <laughs> uh, I don't want to sound like a bad guy. Um, I wouldn't pay Lamar two hundred thirty million. Fully guaranteed, I wouldn't do it. Strictly because, as you mentioned, the last two years he's been banged up at the end of the season. It's ultimately affected the Ravens' playoffs. Um, I have no questions about him as a passer. I think he is very well one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL when it comes to passing the ball. It's just the Ravens did a god-awful job surrounding him with talent. So I don't know questions about the passer. It's just for me, it's the injuries and ultimately the, the longevity because we saw Cam Newton. Cam Newton had probably a, a what, maybe five, six-year prime run where he was elite. Um, yep. And then the injuries took a toll. His body got so banged up to where he was really kind of just a shell of his former self. And with Lamar... I kind of have the same concern only because I kind of wonder, okay, how m- it's, it's not like one good knee injury. And then I kind of wonder that I screw myself over with this contract, but yeah. he's he's certainly worth, you know, close to 200 fully guaranteed considering what Burrow and Herbert and uh, Jalen hurts are going to get and Kyler Murray. Yeah, what what he has got. Is, yeah. My thing is Kyler Murray got paid one. Kyler Murray got paid that type of money. Why not pay Lamar Jackson? Lamar is worth more than Kyler. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. but... And Kyler damn near tore every single bone off his knee. Not to mention <laughs> Ky- <laughs> not to mention Kyler is like right around 500 as far as a win-loss record. Mm-hmm. Right around that, give or take, I think. so. And Lamar has certainly done more. But at the same time, uh, I just would... <laughs> it's tough because I think he's worth it. But at the same time, I think the Browns screwed this up for everybody. Yeah, but but again, the Browns they did it because they were desperate and because, like Deshaun Watson wasn't wasn't you know it was it was. I'm trying to think. Javante said it before, but it's like the demand, you know, the the demand, like the fact that he wouldn't have went to y'all, you uh, the Browns, if they didn't give him that contract because there were other teams, so you had to outbid those other teams. Um, so Lamar, it's That's it's an unusual case. I think, again, like you mentioned, Alec, because of that agent having that middle ground, that's why a guy like Kyler Murray can get that contract because an agent can, can tell a guy, hey, at the end of the day, it's not what we want, but at, it's it's the best deal for you moving forward. Like right. You can benefit from this. Lamar, I, I don't think he's seeing it that way. He's seeing it as I'm better than Deshaun Watson. I've earned it more than Deshaun Watson has these past couple of years. I've definitely earned it more than Kyler Murray. And he so has. I'm to be fair, he has. Contract- yeah. Yeah, but without that agent in the middle saying, hey, whispering in your ear going, hey, man, I've talked to the other team that, that are interested. This is the best you're going to get. It's a team you're already with. 
uh, you know, they will probably give you more of a say in the offense of Baltimore and what you want to do. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, it, it's kind of, it's really just a, a shot situation because it's just kind of, you know, awful because no matter how you cut it up, no matter how you look at it, Lamar ultimately is the one getting screwed overall. But it just, Cle- <laughs> shout out to Cleveland, man. They uh, they yeah, know how I'm- to ruin a good time. <laughs> I'm just more shocked at the the amount of teams that aren't one. The, the fact that Lamar is available to you know right. trade for, and no teams have made an offer. No teams have even tried to reach out to Lamar Jackson. Like that's what's confusing to me. Right, because there's probably I'd say you know seven, maybe eight teams in the NFL right now, given their quarterback that just say, okay, you're my franchise. I have no reason to upgrade whatsoever at the position. Right, like there may be seven or eight guys I consider in that category. Everyone else, Holmes, Hurt, like, <laughs> you, know, you get to count the quarterbacks. Herbert, Burrow. Did you say Lawrence? Yeah, Lawrence. Yes, Lawrence. I'm missing. That's how many? Is that six? That's six. Who did you say? I said Hurts, Mahomes, Burrow, Herbert, Allen, Lawrence, Tua, Dak, Tua now. Yeah, Dak, Lamar. Well, <laughs> if I had Lamar, I would have no problem with. I would not upgrade from Lamar Jackson. I mean, we'll say Stafford because the Rams can't upgrade with the amount of cap space that cap hell that are they're in right now. They can't afford and just Lamar kind of the, the direction of that team in general. But yeah. Yeah, so there's roughly six to eight quarterbacks, right? I think if you're any other, if you're any of those other, let me do quick math. Twenty four. Right, twenty four. Yeah, if you're in those other twenty four teams, you're constantly looking. Okay, how can I upgrade at the quarterback position? Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, that is the position that will make or break you. Like, look at, um, you know, Jason, like the former or the current Bucks GM. Right, that was a guy who uh, was a big part of the Jameis Winston era, and was probably going to get fired before he looked into signing Tom Brady. And now he's a big part of the rebuild in Tampa. Right, so quarterback mm-hmm. makes or it, it can make or break you. Mm-hmm. From you know, from a coach, from a front office perspective, and um, I, I, yeah, so I just <laughs> you there's seven or eight quarterbacks I consider like top tier. Lamar is one of those guys, and I, you have I to agree. if you're not if you're if you don't have one of those guys, you have to upgrade. So the fact that Washington, the Raiders. <sighs> Um, you know, so many teams, the, the Panthers, the Falcons already came in and said, no, we're not interested. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But, but out of, out of those top tier quarterbacks that you just mentioned out, how many of those have actually missed a, a games the past two years? Like Lamar has. Mm. Bur- well, Burrow towards ACL. ACL is rookie year. Okay. Um, but he hasn't since, but no, yes, that's true. Um, and he doesn't. Run, and he doesn't run like Lamar. He's right. Way- Damn. There's no one else. Dak. <laughs> if yeah, if you consider Dak in that category, then Dak. Yeah, but but yeah, there's nobody really else. Nobody else. And I, and then and that's a fair point, DeAndre. You know, with the injuries, because at the end of the day, that ultimately affected the Ravens, because they could have beat the Bengals in the playoffs this year. Oh, facts. With Tyler Huntley, like- they had a, they were they were in that game. They had, they had Lamar. You know, you could argue that game was differently. Like if I'm is literally just I got, like a B-list Lamar. Yeah, it's, it's funny that they have. He was this, a Pro Bowler. They have this. Sit- <laughs> he was a Pro Bowler. They have this same exact backup quarterback <laughs> as your over as your first string quarterback. Like it's hilarious. Like it was hilarious to me. Yeah. Like my girl, we were watching the game. She's like, "Is that Lamar Jackson?" I was like, "A little bit racially motivated." But n- no, they no. just they play they play almost exactly alike and look alike, yeah. But no, Baltimore would have won. But I mean, it's just it's just it, it's a weird situation, and I I kind of I think nobody really knows how this is going to turn out. You know, because I think and and it might take Lamar hitting the market, and you know when the tampering begins Monday, when teams can actually talk to Lamar. Uh, no, that's the thing, dude. People need to realize that 
you know, they can't talk to Lamar Jackson until Monday. Like teams can't officially reach out to players and talk until the tampering period begins. So that's when his market would heat up, I'd assume, because then you can talk to him without getting in trouble for tampering. But yeah, again, it's just like, and you know, again, say you do offer him a contract well, Baltimore is going to sit there and say, oh, he agreed to that contract. Okay, but we'll sign him. Thanks. You did all the hard work. So I don't know where he's going to go. Where do you, where do you guys think he's going to end up ultimately? If you had to pick a team right now to, to bet on where I would want him. I, okay. I don't, I don't really know where he'll, I think he probably will be in Baltimore, but I want him to be in Atlanta. That'd be a fun I want team. The Vic, I want the Vic memories. You want the, the, the Michael Vick experience. I want the Michael Vick experience. All <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Okay. I haven't really put that much thought into it because I feel like he, I feel like he will stay in Baltimore. Yeah. If th- they, they're smart enough. But Atlanta would be fun. And I also thought about the Colts, but that would just be a whole different ball game because they haven't had, they've never had a quarterback like no, that. The ultimate you know? Colts move would be to acquire Matthew Stafford. <laughs> that would be the ultimate Colts move. Wait, let me ask you this real quick. Do you think Lamar will play this year on the franchise tag? I don't know. No. I don't think he will. I don't think he will. If he doesn't get a deal, I I could legitimately see him hold out. Yeah, same here. I could see him hold I, out. I think mm-hmm. I, I think I think I think this is the final straw for him. Yeah. I think a fun team would be um, you know, I think the commanders, because, you know, you're trying to get rid of this whole Dan Snyder era and move on from that. Terrible man. Nope. Yeah, he is. He's a, he's a piece of crap. <laughs> for, he's a POS. Um, but I think if you're the one to move on and usher in a new era of, you know, the commanders, uh, you know, I think Lamar Jackson would be the face you would want of your team. He's a great guy. He's a leader. He's an elite quarterback. Yeah. Um and the, the the commander, that's a good team in, in Washington. It's just a matter of they don't have a quarterback. Oh, my fault. My fault. I'm just saying, you look at the history of the commanders back when, you know, they were, the, you know, the the word that shall not be said, said ever again. But when they were that team. I got a sweater. They had, they, they had their Super Bowl. <laughs> they had their Super Bowl victories. <laughs> Dud Williams was the quarterback, bro. I'm telling you, yeah. all all, uh, all uh, DC needs is a, is a brother at the at the helm, and they and, and they, they you know, <laughs> Donovan McNabb, they man. And Doug is. Hey, <laughs> we don't we don't we don't talk about McNabb in Washington. We you mean R- you mean RG three? Oh, yeah, yeah. You mean RG three? That's the correct answer. RG three, yeah, RG three. Yeah, well, I think isn't D- Doug's involved in the front office in some way, shape, or form, right? Yes, I think he's like the vice president, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's involved. So, I mean, I think commanders would be fun. But ultimately, I think like both of you said, I think whoever gets him to agree to a contract, Baltimore is just swooping to go, okay, thanks. And here Lamar signed. Sign the contract, come back to Baltimore, and uh, we'll we'll, we'll run it back. I think that's ultimately what's going to happen. Well, unless a team gives him that Deshaun Watson contract, then Baltimore Uh, will be like, uh, yeah. And uh, I think all the other owners would uh, not be happy about that. Oh, fats. Because I think the owners, in some way, shape, or form, uh, very much had an impact in uh, this market for Lamar Jackson. Yep. Could you imagine how the owners would feel seeing a player with representing himself as an agent? Yep. Get just contract yep. for a quarterback. Like, no, nah. no, that wouldn't fly the NFL. They had to, they had to shut it down right away. Yeah. He's getting drug tested <laughs> every day. <laughs> Yeah, he, he would get a drug test, like some uh, uh, NFL uh, officer, some some employee for the NFL might sneak into Lamar's car, put a gun in there or something. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, NFL don't play. Things like, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think so either. I think uh, that would not look good on the – because I think that's the one thing the NFL, the NFL does not want to be the NBA in the sense of the players have the power in the NBA and Man. kind of – <laughs> yeah, like, like, could you imagine somebody pulling in the NFL what James Harden did in Houston? You know, he he, he got fat, went to the strip club every day, and then said, "Hey, you know what? I want out of here. Can you just like let me go?" Man, his restaurant is really good. Harden's? Yes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Restaurant's really good. Like, I'm just say like he, he, the the shenanigans that happened in the NBA could not fly in the NFL. See, I, hey Nick, I'll tell you a, a, one thing. I want to go see them uh, strip clubs that he was so interested in in Houston. 
<laughs> that's what, that's what all the talking. rappers be talking. That's why everybody <laughs> loves Houston. For some odd reason. <laughs> it's the one selling point Houston has, right? Mm-hmm. It's the one thing. That's why Drake be mentioning Houston in almost every single song, man. I was like, good hey, I'm lord. Like, I'm like, I'm like New Will. I don't even want to go there for the girls. I want to go there for the wings, supposedly. Yeah. <laughs> you told the bubble I was going there for the wings. <laughs> uh uh, very quickly, we'll touch on we'll touch on some last minute NFL news before we dive into some NBA talk. Um, See Devin McCourty retired. Yep, Devin McCourty just announced his retirement. The longtime Patriots safety. I uh, remember that that commercial they had. There, you know, he him and his twin it was about lotion mm-hmm. or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. They would always play. I'm like, wow, their skin is glistening. Maybe I should get it. <laughs> and I was like, wow. <laughs> um, so the latest news around the NFL, including DeAndre Hopkins, his market could be heating up here soon, and it would only take as much as a second round draft pick to acquire DeAndre Hopkins uh, from the Cardinals. Then you're probably going to have to rework a contract for him as well. Uh, the NFL officially reinstates Calvin Ridley. Very good. Um, for something he should not have been suspended for, <laughs> because guys have done a lot worse as we've seen in the NFL. But hey, we call it. That's a big. That's a big it's game a, for the Jaguars. Very big. It's a very big game for the Jaguars. Um, obviously, there's reports that the Saints and Michael Thomas are working on a contract uh, to bring him back to New Orleans. We'll see where that ends up. Uh, and then, lastly, this morning, the Minnesota Vikings released out Ad, uh, Adam Thielen. Longtime Viking, hometown Minnesota kid, went to college in Minnesota, if I'm correct on that. Um, and he was he's their third uh third all time leader in touchdowns for the Vikings. Man. So he is Good uh, story. Great he's, story. Yeah, he's moving on. I don't know where he could go though. <laughs> New England. Very on brand. He fits no, he fits the mold perfectly. He's very very on brand yeah. for Billy. Oh, Jack. they said off brand now. He yeah, yeah, yeah. Very on brand for Billy. Mac Shack. Jones yeah. another, needs another slot guy. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, that's a good one. I actually, yeah, that's a really good fit. <laughs> you know, Bill Belichick <laughs> loves loves Dell's receivers. <laughs> we all know that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he's brought back to Minnesota. Maybe down the line, like on a maybe like he sees the market, comes back to Minnesota on a cheap, much cheaper deal because just the fact that he's grew he grew up in Minnesota, he's went to college in Minnesota. <laughs> And, um, yeah, I mean, it depends what Minnesota can really upgrade him with because I think they're pretty stacked – or what's it called? They, they they don't have that much cap space entering this offseason, although they freed up Adam Thielen. They freed up uh, Eric Kendrick, so uh, we'll see. But they do need to add a lot more to that defensive side of the football than Good. they do offensively. God, yeah, they do. Right. Because getting torched by Vanilla Vic – it does not does not look great. You and this you and this vanilla Vic. It's a cold nickname, bro. I can't help it. Like I heard him say it once. I was like, oh my God. It works. It fits. It, <laughs> it uh, fits. And then all and then the Jets also released Braxton Berrios, their receiver. Um a very again, another New England fit. Would not shock me whatsoever. Oh, Zach Wilson's guy. Dang, he really is done there. <laughs> the Zach Wilson era is over. <laughs> that was his dude. <laughs> that was his guy, man. You would see, all right, on Bleacher Report, Zach Wilson, two yard pass touchdown, Braxton Berrios. And it's a handoff. <laughs> not even. It's like it's like a. It's like the handoff that counts as a pass. Yep, yeah, not, not even. Not even uh-huh. a throw. Um, okay, so let's talk a little NBA here, boys. Obviously. Um, <laughs> last week or I'm sorry earlier this week there was a fun segment on first take between uh, Kendrick Perkins and uh, JJ Redick and uh, about who the MVP should be it's so, the truth it's the truth it's I, the truth I never said that <laughs> I just love it how, like JJ clearly was you know he clearly said what he said and JJ was like yeah you said that <laughs> bro, bro, I just love how Stephen A was Stephen A was just, he was quiet <laughs> he was the just, entire time just, he was just—he was like somebody else yelling on my show. Yeah, he was like this is giving the side eye. <laughs> uh, but 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 you know, uh, Jokic. I mean, obviously, he is one of the best players entirely in the NBA. He's kind of—I wouldn't say changed it because nobody else simply can do what he's doing right now. But he is 
a center who is your one, two, three, four, and five, uh, with no real other superstar next to him. You have like a one legged Jamal Murray who it's cool for what he is, but he's not who he, who he was before that injury. Um, obviously there's Joel Embiid, there's Giannis who's still very much in the mix because he's doing some amazing things this year. But who do you guys think the MVP should be this year? Should it be Jokic for a third time, or because I think the last guy to do it three years was it Larry? I believe so. Yeah, right. Yeah, Larry Bird, the last guy to do it three in a <gasps> row. And what do they have in common? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> but okay. From uh, from, I believe the MVP should be Embiid. Okay. And it's just people will get. People will get tired of the same thing. And we know we trust me, we're all gonna know Jokic is Jokic is good. He deserves it. But it's because they're two different people, but they're also two different players. Cause Embiid, he uh, you know, he'll take criticism in a way that he views it as, oh, this person talking down to me. Jokic First off, we got to give props to Mike Malone, the coach of the Denver Nuggets, because that man has built the team Mm -hmm. and has kept it all intact. But Jokic listens to his coach. Joe Embiid, he's a a little bit more of a character than Jokic is. And that's why some people want to write off Embiid, not as the MVP, because Jokic carries himself differently. No, I mean, Jokic will will run into a dude too and talk crap. But overall His brothers from, do it too. From overall <laughs> from what I've seen, Embiid has matured a lot this year. Yeah. He still has fun on the court, but he has matured a lot. He turns off the ball a lot. Good lord. But like I said, he has matured a lot. And just based off, you know, Jokic can average a twenty point triple double for a season as much as he wants, but MVP, like most valuable player, it's such an it's such a prestigious award to where you really have to look at almost everything. And Denver plays like this almost every single year, especially especially when they're healthy. But the Sixers, they've they like I've told I've told everybody who's you know watched the Sixers, I'm like they look different. They do. They lost to Dallas though. Whoop, whoop. Anywho, they do look different. Indeed. And you couldn't make a case for Giannis. Giannis, that man is good. That man's a, man is a freak. He's a leader. And he can have multiple MVPs down the road as well. But I believe it's Embiid. Okay. This, year, this year it's Embiid. And I forget, in the NBA, do you do the awards after the finals or before the finals? You do, you do them um, after, right? Uh, yeah, I think it's before the no. I think it's before the finals. Is it? Yeah, Damn. I think they end up like during the Eastern, like around the time of Eastern Conference Championships. Mm. Maybe I know they f- for sure did Rookie of the Year during the opening round. Um, yeah, I think I think I think uh, Conference Championships is when they announced that. Okay, because here's my here's my kind of thing about Jokic winning it three times in a row, um, and I think. I think I'm right on this. I could easily be wrong. I believe Larry was in the finals all three years and he won and he lost Mm -hmm. one to the Lakers, right? So he won two. He lost one to the Lakers when he was MVP three years in a row. And I just feel like with an award as prestigious as it is for this kind of situation to where you're a three time in a row league MVP, Denver's exited the playoffs early the last two years. Beautifully said. Huh? Beautifully said. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they, I mean, Jokic, as great as a, as great as a, as a regular season, he's put up in back to back and probably for three years in a row now. And as much as he as he as he's revolutionized, you know what he's done because simply we've never seen a center take over and have a triple double and put up thirty a game with ten and ten and um, like he's done. But if you're gonna do it three times in a row, there has to be some kind of finals, you know involved whether you want it whether you've been to it but every year uh denver has exited the playoffs relatively early Mm -hmm. so i just feel like 
I can't give it to a guy three times in a row when you've exited the playoffs early, you know, and we'll see what happens this year. But for sure, the last two years, they've exited early. I just, I just couldn't give it to a guy like that. You know, you make a very, make a very valid point because, you know, the year Dirk won his MVP award. Oh, seven. Right? You know who we lost to? Yeah, the, uh, the <laughs> we lost the to Warriors. The, we right? lost to the AC the Warriors. <laughs> and people were questioning them, why did he get MVP? It should have been Kobe. Yeah, and that's exact like how people would question that. It's exactly how you say it, and it makes sense because yeah. even Dirk said, D- Dirk said I, I, I shouldn't have. It shouldn't have been given to me because we need to get past the first round. And I believe that. NBA should look at it because it should be because the season is, you know, played out 82 games, but you have playoffs as well. And that matters. Yeah. And it matters. It matters a lot. Yeah. If you're going to win it three times in a row, it should matter. The MVP should be held out, should be, yeah, held out till like at least the finals start. It should. That's sad. Let's call Adam Silver right now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but I, it, it's just hard because I think with Embiid, Embiid, I think it should be Embiid, Giannis. Um, obviously, I think before his injury, I think Lucas should have deserved some consideration. That close. Just because of what he's done with that Mavericks roster. We don't talk about um, <laughs> Before the Kyrie trade. Even after, you know, still not a whole lot of wins with Kyrie. But point aside, uh, with Jokic, again, you know, if you're going to win it three times in a row, there's got to be some finals involved at some point. Because that, when you're the MVP, you just got to be involved some way, shape, or form. And with Larry Burr won it three times in a row, who's the only other guy to do it since Jokic, and Larry Burr was in the finals every one of those years. Won two of them. So I just feel like you can't give it to a guy in this day and age three times in a row. And that he's lost in the playoffs every single year. It's like in the NFL, we, you know, the years we give it to Aaron Rodgers. Oh, Aaron Rodgers was a great regular season MVP. And what did he do with it? He got bounced around one mm-hmm. at home. That's it. Yep. So I just feel like there's got to be some, some more uh, postseason advancement for Jokic to win it this year for me to give it to him. But even if he does, I still think. Embiid's a good choice. Um, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a basic B here. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Giannis. That's, and that's I yeah, 100% Giannis. understand you. Yeah, like Giannis has all the tools, all the attributes in the it's, game. It's them in Boston right now in the East competing for that top seat. So I, I give it to Giannis. Yeah. What about the Knicks? Um, <laughs> I think he'll probably go to Jokic um, due to the fact that one. The Nuggets are first seed in the Western Conference right now. Regardless of how they do in the playoffs, that's how the MVP award is a regular season award. They end voting after, right when the regular season ends. So uh, and it's unfortunate because sometimes like we do come call into question like, oh, should the MVP award be uh, saved until like, again, the Eastern Conference Championship when voting lots and everything? Because there's a lot of people who shouldn't have won it uh, if you look at their playoff resume over the past 10 years. Um, but also, I mean, look at where these teams are without some of their star players. We've seen the butts this year without Giannis and I've seen them win games. They're, I think nine and five without Giannis. The Sixers are eight and four without Embiid and Nuggets are three and five without Jokic. So Jokic does mean a lot more to those teams. Respectively. DeAndre, what's the Mavs record without Luca? Huh? What's the Mavs record without Luca? That's different though, but y'all y'all trash uh, Rafaldo. So I mean, <laughs> y'all aren't even y'all aren't even like no, you know, he, middle he, of the pack. He has no shot. But 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 uh, continue. That is rubbing salt yeah, in the I mean, right but, now. But but I mean, like Nuggets, like you said with Jamal Murray, like he's still he's a shell of what he was right now. I'm not saying how he can't be back to that. Um, what's it called bubble Jamal Murray. He can't go back to that because uh, that was insane. Uh, what he was doing in the bubble. Um, but you look at the Sixers, who they can rely on without Embiid. Like, we've seen guys like Tyrese Maxey step up throughout uh, this entire season. We've seen guys like Harden step up occasionally 
throughout this season. Um, Shake Milton even came alive uh, during a couple of games without Embiid. So, um, and then we look at the Bucks. Drew Holiday has stepped up tremendously this year w- with the absence of both Giannis and Chris Middleton at times. Chris Middleton's just now returning. Britt Lopez has stepped up. When when Jokic isn't playing or when he's not performing, who is stepping up on that on that Denver team that you can that you consistently that you know when Jokic is done, this guy steps up. You see, Aaron Gordon won the dunk contest. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Uh... Yeah, Aaron Gordon, yeah, he just he steps up in the entertainment department. Sure, he'll give you some flashy dunks for the game, but <laughs> I would say. Um... Besides Jokic, Denver doesn't have another. No, they they don't. They don't have another center. They don't. They don't yeah. even have like Jamal Murray. He can hoop. He can hoop. Yeah. Is he a little hesitant sometimes because of his yeah. injuries? Yeah. But he he can. But center is very is a very very big piece in the NBA. Even though they say big, the real true big men are depleting, dying because. Steph Curry. That pull up. <laughs> but they don't they really don't have a backup center. Unless you want to throw in DeAndre Jordan. I figured they have him. Just sits there. Yep. <laughs> he I don't know what he'd be doing down in Denver. <laughs> well, didn't they they traded for uh Thomas Bryan during the trade deadline? But Oh man. Continue. <laughs> he's been he's been but he's been but you should you should see everybody was like <laughs> People on Twitter, they said Thomas Bryan fooled us, man. The king made him good. <laughs> Another prodigy <laughs> of LeBron. Mm-hmm. It was a good pickup by Denver, though, because they needed a backup center. Yeah. We, we should have got him, but you know, yeah. You but, have Dwight Powell, you're okay. It's all about effort, right? <laughs> it's all about effort in Dallas. That's Dwight Powell gives you effort. That's just rubbing salt in the wound. <laughs> So we'll be a player playing team for but sure. You, but you did bring up Luca and how like oh the Mavs are aren't like what are they without Luca? That's true. They, they aren't. But you also the Mavs are what seventh seed right now. Yeah, I was say, like, are, like that it, argument almost hurts the Mavericks. First off, yeah, like, that yeah, argument Mavs, hurts Luca. The Clippers, yeah, exactly. The Warriors, the Mavs were a top three seed and Luca was missing games and we saw what the Mavs looked like without him and Mavs were top three seed with Luca. I think Luca would be an MVP candidate right now. Right. Let's, yeah. If you want to look at most valuable player, give it to Luca. If it was that's just, true. If it was definitely most valuable player, Luca. Hands but down. here's like the problem is y'all are so bad without Luca Let's that go. it hurts the playoff standings, and people just look and go, "Huh, yeah, you're not a top four seed in the West, so uh, yeah, you need you need Luca back." Well. If you look at it, the Clippers, the Warriors, when was the Timberwolves, the Mavs. Let's see. We sit in like seventh or eighth, but really, everybody's fighting for that third, fourth. Yep, yeah, exactly. What, 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 seed was, uh, what seed was OKC when Westbrook won MVP? Oh, that's a good question. It was like sixth or fifth because they went they? against the Rockets and then one of the in the first round, I believe. Yeah, so mm-hmm. for fifth probably because. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fifth or sixth. Okay. Yeah. Missed not, a triple double. Not too bad. Hey, y'all put some respect but on also- Russ. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. They were lot they were winless without him for five games. The Clippers? Yes. Yeah. With him. Yeah. I feel were- bad for us. Y'all leave him alone. Be nice. But, but effort. The thing <laughs> The thing is about Russell and his MVP. I don't think if someone was to do what Russell did now, they wouldn't be an MVP candidate. I don't think they they would they wouldn't win MVP like Russ had. He was the first to do it. Yeah, he was the first to do it. So it was it was a special thing. That's what that's why his was that's why he got the MVP award uh, despite you know the Thunder being in the middle of the pack in the Western Conference. But usually, again, the MVP award is awarded to most valuable most valuable player, and usually that most valuable valuable player is a top three seed in their co- respective conference. How come LeBron has won enough MVPs? I just thought about that. Huh. Let's think about it. Why is LeBron won as many MVPs? Do you know how where LeBron was in his early Cleveland go? Who was on his team? Good job. Anywho. 
And then where'd he go? <laughs> my, which time I, which, which time I there, they had Delonte West, Booby Gibson. I know the team. They had they had they had a uh, Avala. Uh, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> Vala, uh, Vala, yeah, oh. he, he played for a little bit. Idris Vidrowskis. Idris Vidrowskis. Don't disrespect those guys. Dude. Don't disrespect them. <laughs> Big Z. Anywho, it's because like all these super teams. You can look at KD. Oh my gosh, bro. When I saw he got traded to the Suns, I damn near threw my phone off my balcony. Does this is this is, I was it, very I was like, Are you kidding me? Are it, you kidding me? Are you for KD slander? I'm all about look, y'all can say I can everybody has their goat, you know. Yeah talks but i believe you stay with one team your whole career that makes you a legitimate that makes you a lock-in hall of famer because that means you're not giving up on wanting to bring a title or a dog wanting to bring a title <laughs> <laughs> it's bailey <laughs> wanting to bring a title and a championship to the to the city that believed in you. She heard KD slander and had to come in and do it. Yep. And <laughs> KD, KD, KD has already said that he's not trying to recreate yeah, anything. KD. He wants to write his own story, which I can completely believe. It's why he went to Golden State. It's why he went to the Nets. It's why he's in Phoenix now. So KD's a great player. Devin Booker, he can be quiet. But... <laughs> But overall, Katie, Katie's a great player. I just don't like his story. I don't. Like, you got to look at, besides Dirk and Kobe, who else do you think about as a person who stayed with the team? Tim Duncan. There you go. There you go. They made that team. That's why I view the Warriors so highly. Because they, they made, draft. They made that team. Yeah. But then they signed Kevin Durant, so. And then. Yeah, the, and then they all got hurt. Yeah. <laughs> and then they came back last year and won it again. Yeah, don't know how that happened. Man. Well, Tatum took every shot known to man on that court. <laughs> Shout out Javante. I know he's watching. <laughs> um, it's a good quote. Okay, yeah. So, uh, my, couldn't be me. My, go- my goat's Braun. Yeah, yeah, I said it, Nick. You know who my goat is? Is, is it Michael Jordan? It's Kobe. Okay. No, we're all different then. Uh, I already know. What, I already, already know what the Bulls fans' goat is. Jordan. Jordan. Uh, I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say D Rose. Jordan, without a doubt, bro. It's definitely D Rose. That's his goat. Just no hey, Steph hey, Curry. If D, Rose, if D Rose didn't get hurt, shit, maybe. Just no Steph Curry is <laughs> in my top three, babe. Steph Curry is in my top three. I don't okay, I wouldn't agree with you, but I don't hate that answer. Not, Fair. Not for the, I don't I don't hate it. If you can change he, he you can, can it's change, a valid point. If you can change the way a game is played. It's a valid argument. And become the best at it. It's a valid argument. While being highly underrated. Yeah. Yeah. You deserve oh, that crown. I just thought about another guy who is probably gonna be a Hall of Famer that's stuck with one team his entire career. That's currently playing. Giannis. Oh, Giannis is a good answer. I wasn't going to say Giannis, but that's a good answer. Uh, Dame. Damn. I was going to say Luca. Dame. <laughs> oh, no. Luca, Luca ain't going to be a Maverick. His career. <laughs> no, Luca gone in two years, boy. Oh, Dude, no, Luca man. gone when Kyrie leaves. <laughs> <laughs> when the Mavs come out and say, hey, Luca, we got you. Uh, we got you, Russell Westbrook, to come and play with you. Luca said, I want out. <laughs> Goodbye, you Dallas. Know, you, know one, you know one player I would trade the farm for? Dame Lillard? If I'm, if I'm, as, as the Bulls, as a Bulls fan. Dame Lillard? No. Tyrese Lebr- Halliburton. LeBron? Damn. I'll, I'll give you two more guesses. Um, wait, wait, time out. Can we get a... Conference. Yes. Western. Uh, who? Not, oh. it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a star. Like It's not like someone old. Like He's been in the league several years. This is more of someone I would build my team around. Shea. Shea. No. Tierra Fox. No, that, a- Anthony Edwards. Oh, I would trade the farm for Anthony Edwards, bro. About to walk out. 
because in Chicago, we would like we would start throwing them damn. I mean, I'm not saying like he would be Jordan, but like we would start throwing them comparisons. Like, oh, we expect this man to be like great with for us because he he has the athleticism and he plays like Jordan a little. He also has Rudy Gobert. <laughs> He was doing that before when he didn't have when he didn't have Rudy Gobert. Which Man, SGA was a great answer. I thought it was Shea because I love yeah, Shea. I love Shea. I, I, I love Shea too, but Anthony Edwards, bro. We, like, we were were talking we were talking about it before the season started, Andre. We said, "Man, if the Thunder suck, he'd be a fun trade deadline guy." Oh, facts, facts. Because did, like, did you hear what he I, said? Oh, go continue down there. I know, I'm just telling you, bro. Like, if, if Minnesota said, "Hey, we trade Anthony Edwards," or Anthony Edwards doesn't want to be in Minnesota anymore, I would trade fucking Levine. I'll trade Demar Derozan just to start over and you have a star to build around. You know what you need to do? You know what you need to do to make that happen? Um. Okay. So hear me out. But, hey, hey turn turn on 2K. No. <laughs> no. No. So just follow, follow my my plan here. Okay. Step okay. one: get Rudy Gobert sick. Oh, All right. God. And then. Just let Rudy Gobert do Rudy, Go- Rudy Gobert from there. Everything will follow. So pull a Donovan Mitchell 2.0? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no, so what, what did Chase say? Uh, a reporter asked him, you know, he asked him, because, you know, the Thunder aren't that good. Right. And he said, you know, players come in this league and they have that they have that mentor, like Luca and Dirk, you know, several players have this player. How do you feel knowing that's you? And his answer stuck out to me. I'm like, oh man, this dude is that dude. He was he said that he takes he takes it with honor. To be a thunder? No, to oh. be a to be that guy in the locker room. Ah. Because I don't know if you can tell. A lot of these damn OKC players love making TikToks for some reason. And yep. Shay, he was just he just said, It's it's uh it's not on me to like lift the team up, but it's on me to lift my family up. And that he's basically saying like his teammates. Yeah. And right. he's saying he did he says he was basically saying like being there feels great for like basically for him like he feels like he's feels praised there he feels respected and that's what he wants all the other players to feel mm. mm-hmm. good answer man and somebody man the guy that oh um, man he said he said this answer by shy gildress alexander and then there's john morant i was like dang why, why, why'd you why'd you have to Why'd, Why? you, why'd you have to caption the tweet like that? You could have just stopped stopped at this this answer by SGA. But yeah. God. Um, okay, so last thing we'll do here. Nick, if you do me a favor, pull up the NBA uh, standings. Cause, uh, see my oh, phone, I look at it every night. My phone is, is not is dead. So we'll play a little playoff predictor here and just kind of see how we feel the playoffs are going to turn out. Um okay. We'll exclude the play-in, so just give me who you think the top eight seeds are going to be when it's all set on a, set on after the play-in. That's crazy. All right, Nick, uh, you can pick the conference we start with. Well, we're going to start with the hardest one. We're going to do Western. Oh, okay, fun. <laughs> the Western Conference. So, Nuggets first. Light the beam. The Kings are second. Hey, hey Fox Ma- is- Makai was right about the Kings. Makai was right about the Kings. <laughs> Makai, who, who Makai came on the show before the season started, and he told us the Kings are going to be a top four seed in the West, and we all called them buffoon. Uh, we called buffoonery on that. I be- trust me, Sabonis. That trade between Sacramento and Indiana, one of the most even trades between two teams of this decade, besides Trey and Luca. Yeah, yeah, because Halliburton is. Absolutely balling. Sabonis is balling. Sabonis is like when it's a poll for top 10 players, the MVP ladder, he's like six. (laughs) He's like six or seven. Okay. So you got the Nuggets, the Kings, 
good old Memphis Grizzlies, the Suns, the Clippers, the Warriors, the Timberwolves, the Mavs, Lakers, the Pelicans. And we'll do, we'll stop at 13, Jazz, Thunder, Trailblazers. Okay. I want you to hear this. Warriors record, 34 and 33. And they're in the play right now, hypothetically. Timberwolves right? record, 34 and 33. Yeah. Mavs record, 34 and 33. Clippers record, 35 and 33. So you mean that, that much, it's literally a half game back between all those two teams. Yep. You got to go on a streak in order to get in, to get to that fifth seed. But six, seven, eight, they're up for grabs. Yeah. Yeah. See, I think it's gonna play out. And I'll just I'll just announce them like one eight just so I can get the right matchup. I think Denver is gonna be first and they're gonna play the eighth seed. I think Golden State's gonna drop to eighth. I just recently they've they've just That's bad slump bad. They they also they can't win on the road for some reason. Yeah. It's just That's bad for Denver. Yeah. Which, I mean, yeah, that could be an opportunity for Golden State. Golden State uh, got their number. Yeah. And there, and there's nothing – them boys in Golden State love nothing more than the playoffs, man. No, they show up. Mm-hmm. Uh, this will probably be the most fun um, series, and that's the two-seeded Kings, which I have a two. Uh, and then they f- play the Los Angeles Lakers. Oh, how dare you? And you have Braun coming back? Oh, I, I assume. Yeah, yeah Braun comes back. Oh, that's a good that's a matchup. I like that. Okay. Kings are too young it, for the Lakers. <laughs> They're going to fly through them. Three, I have the Suns taking on the sit seated Dallas Mavericks. Oh, <laughs> I need that series to happen no matter what. I like I want that. I want the smoke. I want. Everyone, I want the smoke from everyone. From deserves. Angel. Everyone deserves a seven-game series between the Mavericks and the Suns. God, oh, fat. Luca whoops Devin Booker's ass. We need it. But now, now it's like that series might be questionable with Kate, especially Katie's health, um, which is crazy. But whoever, 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 whoever wipes the floors in in Phoenix, he probably already got fired <laughs> right after that. There's no way. <laughs> and uh, lastly, I have the Grizzlies and the Clippers for as the four and five seeds. Ironic, you have the Grizzlies against the Clippers. <laughs> oh yeah, this is. I'm telling you, bro. Like this might not happen, but this is like the ideal playoff scenario that I want for the first round in That'd the West. Good. I like that. No Pelicans, buddy. Hey, have you seen our schedule? <laughs> it's, it's we have the softest schedule in the NBA remaining. So hey. Yeah, but Zion's Zion out for, is like, out two, for like two more weeks, and it's only like two more weeks in the season. Hey, it's okay. We'll have Z back for the playoffs. Nah. Um, okay, so I'm going to go the Suns. I'm just going to go in order of the DeAndre. You you, you you knocked out of the park with the playoff matchups. I can't do math like that, so I'm just going to go down my the, the rankings. Okay, go ahead. The so ones, the Suns. I mean, <laughs> Nuggets. Sorry. <laughs> nuggets. Um, two would be the Grizzlies. No, no. Who's two right now? Kings, Kings, Nuggets, Kings, Grizzlies. Um, Suns, Mavericks. Clippers. And then we'll go. I got two more spots left. Mm. Golden State will be seven. And then. Mm, that's a toss up between the Lakers and the Pelicans. Because the Pels no. do have the softest schedule. Not, not, not really, but, you know. If you, if hey, you without LeBron, we're both down our superstars. Now, like in this league, it's possible. You can't count any. Game as a as a automatic win. No, you cannot. And also, also, also the way that AD is playing right now, shit. Hey, and they getting D'Lo uh, bat soon. Hey, we we got yeah. Bi and CJ McCollum, sir. 
Uh, you, Man, you, you, saw, you saw what CJ just did the other night. Torch this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? Give me, give me the Pelicans today. <laughs> hold, on, hold on. Against Dallas, one of the worst defensive teams in the league. Hey, yes. one's a win in the NBA. Just putting salt in the game again. Unless, unless, Dallas, unless uh, <laughs> New Orleans is playing Dallas, five of those, what, 12 games left, then they got a shot. But no. Uh, yeah, give me the Pels at eight. Yeah, yeah. Give me the Pels at eight. Okay. We get Zion back. Right. Give me the Pels. All right. Okay. So now we'll do Eastern. So what, we, what about yours? Oh, want to do mine? You silly goose. You didn't give your rankings up. So, to be quite honest, I'll put top four locked. Like Nuggets, Kings. I'm going to put the Suns at three, the Grizzlies at four. Okay. Because... Sons are on a roll right now. Devin Booker, he uh, B I T C H, but he is hooping. I yeah. give him that. And then I could, because the Clippers are starting to put it together. I, p- I could put the Clippers over the Grizzlies as well, but the Grizzlies are going to keep that fourth spot. So Nuggets, Kings, Suns, Grizzlies, Clippers. He wants to put Dallas at five so bad. <laughs> he wants to put the Mavericks at five. And I am. Oh. No, they're, they're at six. They're at six. Oh, they're at six. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to put the Mavs at six. We're going to figure it out. Dear God, Jason Kidd, we're going to figure it out. And then I'm going to put the Timberwolves. Yeah, no, who am I kidding? I'm gonna put the Lakers at at seven. <laughs> I'm gonna put the Lakers at seven. You don't believe in Rudy Gobert like that? Who would? I mean, apparently, <laughs> uh, does worldwide pandemic diseases uh, believe in him like that? And then I'm gonna put the Warriors at eight because I really think they're gonna go on a run just like the We Believe team did. Okay. Yep. Okay. Man, but I'm really hoping we get DeAndre some bracket over there. You like? <laughs> you want the Nuggets one? I want. I want. A, I want the Suns in the first round as a match. Oh, oh, it's, okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we all deserve that hey, series. It's, it, hey, no, it's not far off. It can happen. It can happen. Yeah, we need a series between the Suns and the Mavs. I need to see Luca like just full on like sucker punch Devin Booker at some point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then use some Slovenian <laughs> slur that no one knows. <laughs> Leave him alone. He'll go, Aruch yokes. <laughs> and we'll go, what did he say? And only Lucas will laugh because he knows what it means. <laughs> okay. So you want to do Eastern? Yeah. So this is the Eastern Conference. So the Eastern Conference. It's a, Eastern, something about basketball this year. It's been really, really competitive. Like there's never been an easy win for any, for anybody. But right now. We got the Bucks, the Celtics, the 76ers, Cavaliers, the Knicks, the Nets, the Heat, the Hawks, the Raptors, the Wizards, the Bulls, and the Pacers. Okay. So, I'll go first. Personally, I don't know what's going on with the Heat because my, my buddy Ian, he's a Heat fan. And he just wants to tear it all down and build around Bam. Because, you know, Tyler Hero can hoop, but I knew he wasn't going to hoop consistently. <laughs> Doing that snarl face he does. <laughs> I knew he wasn't going to hoop consistently. But all it takes is one good performance or a good string of games to see, oh, this person can be, you know, good for the team in latter years. But. So you have the Heat, the Hawks, the Raptors, and the Wizards. Seven, eight, nine, ten. The Bulls sit at eleven. <laughs> Bulls sit at eleven, but man, y'all's. We're gonna talk about defense, man. Hey, we're bad too. I, I never said we were good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference between you and me. I never, I never admitted that we were good this year. Because yeah, Nick said, <laughs> Nick said, when I see smoke, I see fire. <laughs> no, because I was. I uh, I get the alerts because I put the I'm I'm a Bulls fan. I'll always be a Bulls fan because of D Rose and Jordan, and just because Demar Derozan deserves something good. And there was a game y'all were up by two 
at half. And then the score is like 128 to 99 to end the game. I was like, oh my goodness, did they really give up that many points? And but I knew I knew the Bulls were done when we kept losing to the fucking Pacers. And I think we lost twice to them with 20 point leads in both of those damn games. <laughs> so when that happened, I was like, yeah. How about this a bad dude? Year. But okay, so I'm gonna go with the Bucks at one. Okay. The Celtics at two. Actually, no. Celtics have kind of fallen off a bit. I don't know if y'all can tell. I'm going to put yeah. the Reasonably, Sixers yeah. at two. The Celtics at Ooh. three. The Cavs at four. The uh, Knicks at five. Shout out Dodo and Dinwiddie. The Nets at, the Nets at six. And then... Please, bro. I just want the Heat to figure it out because Jimmy Buckets deserves <laughs> – he deserves something after his bubble performances. I'm going to put the Heat at seven. And I'm going to put the Raptors at eight. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Deal, Andre? Yeah, I'm going to go uh, Bucks at one. Uh Celtics at two. I think they'll get it together at least to finish two. They won't. They definitely won't reclaim the number one spot that they had all most of the, this whole season. Um, Philly at three. Cavs at four. Uh, although, I mean, damn, the Knicks could pass them because they've been playing good recently, despite that game against Charlotte where they were just burnt out. Um, but I'll just have I'll have Cavs at four, Knicks at five, the Heat at six. Uh, the Nets fall to seventh, and then Atlanta takes the eighth spot. Mm, okay, it's a good list. Okay, I'm gonna go. Bucks are one. I'm gonna go Celtics two. Top four pretty much stays the same. Bucks, Celtics, 76ers, and then the Cavs. Okay, five. I'm gonna go with the Knicks. Because, you know, New York and yeah, the Knicks, man. Fun basketball time for them right now. You miss mm-hmm. Jalen Brunson? We just we lost our Steve Nash. It's literally the same thing again. <laughs> it's the same thing again. Yeah. It literally is. <laughs> uh, Jalen Brunson was worth that money after all. Yeah, Mark Cuban deserves to be slapped. Along with Nico. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't do anything if the, the no, dang Knicks no, hired the, your dad. The Knicks had everything going for them. <laughs> they were getting Joe LeBronson no matter what. Hey, but you got Kyrie now, so uh, yeah, you got you know. Kyrie. It's a pretty good consolation <laughs> for, prize for, for half a year <laughs> for, 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 a for your months. playoff run. You got him for your playoff run. Uh, uh, if we make it, I'm gonna go uh, the Knicks at five, the Nets at okay. six. The Heat at seven. And who's in the play in right now for the Eastern Conference? The Hawks, the Raptors, and the, uh, the, Wizard. the Wizards. Uh, not Bradley Beal making the playoffs. <laughs> nah. No, KP put a 43. Wednesday <laughs> night. Not KP being healthy. <laughs> he shot uh, 12 for 19. Not KP being efficient <laughs> and healthy. <laughs> I was, I was like, oh my goodness. But you missed that, don't you? No. No. <laughs> You're good. After that performance, he's out for the next six games. <laughs> uh, okay, so at eight, I'm going to go with um, Toronto. I think uh, Pascal's having a very sneaky good year. Mm-hmm. And no one's really talking about him all that much, but uh, Pascal Siakam's having a phenomenal year for the Raptors. Uh, so I'll go with Toronto at eight. And we'll see how accurate our standings are. The playoff or the season's got what 12, 13 games? Yeah. 12, 13. <laughs> the AC's back on. Good to know that. <laughs> um, okay, so I think that's just about uh gonna wrap everything up here, boys. Good show. DeAndre, I appreciate the uh, the Bailey moment there. It's always good oh. to have Bailey on the show with us. Can't tell if she's a KD fan or not. Oh, uh, she doesn't like Dak. We, we were slander and Dak. She came on and was barking, giving her two cents on Dak. <laughs> um, she came on when we were talking about KD. So yes, we, DeAndre, we, we need to find out if Bailey is a KD fan or not. 
I mean, she's been quiet when y'all talk about KD, so I'm guessing she likes him. Mm. Okay. That's Bailey, terrible. Do you, like KD? do you like Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant, Bailey. <laughs> See? Damn. Okay, then. I guess that'll do it then. But, uh, okay. That's to wrap things up, folks. This has been the final drive from Sour Kids Productions. It's been myself, Alec, Nicholas, DeAndre on the zo- on the Skype, Kenneth behind the computer doing all the fabulous work. Ate that pizza finally. I'm <laughs> so- take a nap afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, tell them, folks, we'll be back next week. NFL Fridge will kick off, and that's going to be a whole, whole lot of fun right there in itself. And uh, yeah. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.